Kipchoge and Coast Guy broke records in them, Nick Simmons cut them open, Jamie approved them, and while I raced exclusively in them for the last four months. Today, let's talk about the best running shoe of 2019, the Nike Zoom X Vaporfly Next Percent. What's poppin'? Jordan Thomas here, and today I'm gonna be highlighting the Vaporfly Next Percent. I wouldn't call this a traditional review because I think they're the best shoes that Nike has ever made when it comes to running. However, I do wanna talk about some of the things that helped make it that way and my journey overall in the shoe. First started seeing the shoes back around February, March um, on one of my favorite running accounts uh, at First Run. Shout out my guy Knox. Uh, I first start, started seeing these shoes and where he definitely spends more time on a marathon boat. Listen, I'm more of like an 800 meter 5K runner, but after constantly seeing them on various accounts and just hearing different people's account of using it, I was like, finally, all right, around July, I was like, all right, I'll buy it, I'll buy a pair. And so when I thought about how I could get the best use out of this shoe, I thought at the absolute best, I'd be able to use this for like some tempo runs, maybe just a nice, a nice cool shoe to have for long runs. And I figured at worst, I could bust them out on you know, a 5K or a 10K early season, just something kind of cool to happen. So when I purchased the shoes though, and I got them in the mail, something totally unexpected happened. The first thing I noticed when I took it out of the UPS box was that it came in this iconic black box, usually only reserved for like the Nike Air Jordans. And so I knew that this shoe was gonna be something special, something way more than just a running shoe, but more like a running experience. Speaking of experience, let's talk about some of the things they did to improve the overall experience. When it comes to the Vaporweave material, this is the purest example of addition by subtraction. The transparent mesh-like material is made from two types of thermoplastic, TPU and TPE, and it's also very breathable and it pulls away more moisture from your foot than the previous flying knit version. Now, I didn't own the, the 4%, but I do own a pair of the Zoom Fly Flying It, and I can definitively say that when it came to some of my sweatier workouts, I always noticed that my feet would begin to feel squishy in Flying It shoes. However, when I wore these, not so much squish. Also, this material, it actually reminded me of another long-term favorite running shoe of mine, the Lunar Racer Plus. There's also a really nice bumper in the back to prevent your foot from slipping, and it creates a nice snug feel at the heel. So about the Zoom X Foam? Truly more bounce to the ounce. The design team didn't want to mess with the weight of the shoe going from the 4% to the next percent. And by saving weight in the upper, the design team was able to get more foam in on the shoe all while reducing the stack height from the previous version from 11 millimeters to eight millimeters. In plain English, by adding more of the material that helps you run faster, you can do what? Run faster. Running purists, companies, and swoosh haters alike are calling for the ban of this shoe because of the carbon fiber plate. The presence of the plate is not necessarily where the advantage is. The advantage is in the foam. The science right now doesn't support, nor is there any research that shows what the impact of using this shoe with the foam only is versus using a combination of the foam and the plate. And really, it's the rigidity that you're able to create with using the carbon fiber and the foam that is able to hold it together, and that's actually what's uh, causing the propulsion. So, for all of you that think that you can just put a carbon plate in there and be able to make your shoe fast, look at the foam, guys. Think about it like if you're making a cake. The secret is not in the cake pan, the secret is in the flour and all the other ingredients that go into it. When it comes to performance, these shoes are sneaky good across a wide range of distance and pace. I mentioned early on, I spent most of my time in the 800 to 5K range, but I tried this in workouts from 100 meters to 10 miles. And here's what I learned. When it comes to like the easy tempo, long run type efforts, I felt like the shoe was like very forgiving if I wasn't perfectly hit my midfoot striking. I felt good kind of just kind of plodding along a little bit. And because of the way the shoe is shaped, it didn't, I didn't lose anything in terms of my overall effort or speed. When it came down to track workouts, initially this was a little bit scary for me just because of the stack height being so tall, I was afraid I was gonna like tip over or roll my ankle. Now a lot of that was more mental than it was actually taking place and so I was able to feel a little bit more comfortable running at a little bit uh, faster than mile speed uh, when I came around the corners and then going much faster than that on straightaways. After I built up enough confidence, I was like, let me 
me just try these out uh, in a race. And so I broke them out for a 5K. Now I wasn't out there doing any world beating type times. And so I thought, okay, these, these are cool. I'll, I'll drop down to a lighter shoe or something more like 5K specific. But the next day, my feet didn't feel like I had run a road race. I felt like I had just done a regular workout. And I was like, oh, that's the unlock. These shoes make your feet feel like you're not racing. You can get more performance out of them for the relative energy that you put into them. And so when I ran again a week later, came in about 15 seconds faster. Took a little time off, did a 10K. That for me was when a major unlock took place because typically I don't run very fast for long distances in shoes. And so I don't understand necessarily the benefit in having a shoe like this. But because now I'm starting to approach like 10K um, in, a, in a race, I'm like, whoa, like not only do my feet feel good, but I felt very fast going into the last mile where if I was wearing something like the LT Streak or even my Speed Racer, like that slapping that takes place on those shoes, like over a longer period of time, like that gets worrisome. And subsequently after that, the next three or four races, minus Chicago, I continue to improve and get faster in the shoe. Couple negatives. Now I'll go back to the track with this one. I wouldn't feel comfortable running much faster than like just beneath mile pace in them because I just don't feel like I can grip the ground enough. That stock height is kind of bothering for that type of like sharp cornering. Um, for a road race, it doesn't matter as much. Nor would I use these for a road mile or any type of racing on the track. It's just, just too tall of a shoe. It's for $250, which is my next con. You kind of want it to do something a little bit more than just work. Now, what I will say is this, is that if you're willing to spend $250 on a pair of shoes, you're probably racing or doing runs and things like that that warrant that type of price. And so like when it came to being in Chicago and seeing the hundreds and thousands of runners with these shoes on, I get it. Like it's a destination race. You're spending additional money. I think Jamie brought this up in, uh, in his review. Like if you're willing to spend you know, $200 plus on a registration fee and then spend you know, $1,000 on travel, What's another $250? Now, for somebody like me that just spends a, a great deal of their discretionary income on running stuff, for me, this was like something fun to do, and, I, I, and I'm, I'm happy to have them. And I also take it a step further. They've got, they've got this really cool like offset lacing um, they've got going on to, to create a little bit more of like a snug type of feel without it being full on lockdown. So it really feels like your foot is being trapped at the, uh, the bottom of the shoe and not just at the top. So you get that kind of like, you know, that, that feeling on your forefoot, like the, like the blood just isn't being able to flow all the way through. The logo is printed on the front as if to say like front runners only. Not that you have to be a front runner to have the shoe, but like if you have an opportunity to have something that elites wear and you care about the sport to that degree, then why not have them? And the last thing is mad petty, but inside the box, you also get a white bag. And I feel like, Nothing says kiss my fast like you breaking out a white bag at a race. I found myself looking for reasons to put on this particular pair of shoes. With an amazing design that optimizes style and performance across a range of paces and distances, makes this shoe for me the best shoe of the year and literally my favorite running shoe of all time. I would love to answer questions for you. I've studied this shoe extensively over the last four months or so. So fire away your questions. I get back to everybody in the comments and I'll see you next time. Jordan Thomas, peace.